más. Hey everybody, welcome. So this is a 11 by 17 drawing I'm doing for, I guess a raffle at Four Color Fantasy this coming Saturday. So we'll see how it goes. It's, it's uh, pretty loose pencils. I don't know how well they show up here. Um, I pencil very lightly, so thought I would uh, start this a minute or two early so that I could get set up. Um, where I put my inkwell is under my camera, so it's a little bit different setup than my normal. I think I'm going to be using a brush a good bit today. So this is a Raphael 8404 size 2, and that's at least what I'm going to start with. We'll see how it goes. This is kind of a big drawing, you know, you think of drawing comic book pages and usually they're, they're this size and then many small pictures. Hey, Adam Brooks, thanks for the super chat, man. So this one's a little bit bigger than a, than a typical comic book drawing, but about the size of a comic book page. Kind of like a commission. plan to work out a lot of this drawing in this inking stage, which always makes me a little bit nervous because, I don't know, <laughs> I guess if you make a mistake in the inking stage, that's, uh, that's the end of the drawing. I don't do a lot of commissions right now. I'm, my schedule is pretty full at the moment, so I'm not planning to do any, uh, any commissions in the short term. Um, sometimes I do them like leading up to a show, but I don't really, I don't think I have any shows scheduled. I have a couple of things that, that we're doing for Cartoonist Kayfabe and a couple of book release events for Street Angel coming up. But no, I don't have any, I don't have a commission list going at the moment.
I'm not attending Comic Art Brooklyn this year. I've done it a couple of times. I like that show, but I'm, I'm not doing it this year. Andrew, are you going to Comic Arts Brooklyn? Have you been to that show? It's a great show. It's, it's uh, probably one of the more enjoyable shows that I've done. A lot of good stuff there. A lot of stuff that you don't you don't find anywhere else, so it makes it a good show. Those are always uh, good qualities, I think, in a show, is being able to find stuff that you wouldn't find other, other places. Is it odd not doing stuff with Ed? The the biggest thing that's odd is the, is our like Thursday weekly shoot. That one's odd. It's much easier to do that with another person. And otherwise, you know, it's a lot of it's business as usual. Like I'm still editing videos and releasing videos and stuff, and Ed is still making videos. So that part's pretty normal. Like I said, the difference is really that, that Wednesday weekly update episode. But, yeah, it's good to do different things. I spent um, today wrapping up the lettering, the hand lettering video part one. So that's been kind of fun. And uh, I'm going to post that live after I finish this, this uh, stream. So that'll be up tonight. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's fun seeing Ed's updates. I definitely like seeing all the Japanese stuff that he's been getting into. Congratulations on debuting your retro fit comic, Andrew. I've liked a lot of stuff retro has published over the years. Although, don't ask me to name stuff because I'm sure I will not be able to think of anything on the spot. I don't use a lot of white out. Usually uh, I have a little bit of white acrylic paint whenever I make a mistake, that's what I use. I've just never found any white media that I, that I liked, um, at least white inks. You know, I've heard Pro White's pretty good, but I haven't had any great luck. So I just use uh, white acrylic. I do a lot of my corrections digitally, you know, whenever something's scanned. Um, eh, I don't know, it's not a big part of my process, I guess, the using white. Somebody asked me about using Crow Quill on Street Angel. Uh, Street Angel, I've used everything. Street Angel, the original Street Angel was the first time I ever got a sable hair brush was in the third issue of the original Street Angel series. And like, man, I could feel that difference. With the new, uh, the new Street Angel, Deadly Scroll Alive, that's coming out next week, there are stories that are mostly brushed. There are stories with Crow Quill. There are stories that are pencil. So I don't have... Um, you know, when it comes to Street Angel, I've used 
just about everything I know. Uh, I did one story all on my iPad, so it, it's there's a variety of media on display in Street Angel. Everybody asked me that grand design question. I, I don't know which one I would do. Um, I think X-Men and Fantastic Four are both really kind of, I don't know about obvious, but those are good ones. Something like the Avengers is probably, you know, if you were really going to try to do a treatment, you need something that has enough history, I think, about it, and hopefully some good creators, you know, memorable storylines and runs that you would be able to pull from. So, I don't know. I'm also not that close to very many Marvel characters, so X-Men would have been a sweet spot. Um, after that, I'm not sure. I used to love the Punisher, but not as much anymore. Daredevil would be good. I think Daredevil's had a lot of a lot of cool um, history. If somebody were to do Daredevil as a grand design, I think there'd be a lot to draw from. I think that's a good a good choice. And, uh, you know, I like a lot of the 70s horror characters like Ghost Rider. And Ghost Rider has a, has a good bit of history like that. That could be interesting, maybe. I don't know. I've seen Ultra Clutch. Ultra Klutz. I don't think I've read it. I may even have some in my in my collection. It sounds very familiar.
Hey, Daniel and, and Adam, thanks for the uh, super chats, guys. X-Men Heroes for Hope. Is that the, uh, that's from the 80s? That was a benefit book that Marvel put out? Is that right? There was one, man, I think I'm thinking of the right book. Correct me if I'm wrong here, Adam. The Heroes for Hope came out in the 80s, and it was like a hunger, hunger relief benefit, and a bunch of different creators would do like one or two page short stories, I believe, and did Frank Miller and Bill Sienkiewicz team up on like a Wolverine story that had a couple of really cool pages of art? I can't remember if that's accurate. <laughs> Everything I just said might be completely wrong. Um, let me know if that's the one you're thinking of, Adam. But to be honest, I don't... It's been a long time. I tracked that book down, gosh, 20 years ago or something. A long time ago. You know, whenever I started going to comic book stores and whenever I was really into some of those creators and you know, probably found it somewhere, something that facilitated me getting it at the time. And I think at the time I was a little bit disappointed just because of the people that are involved. I think, I think Barry Windsor Smith is in that. Um, it's a, it's a really, you know, high quality list of creators, but they're all given a very short, you know, like I said, one or two pages and they're, and they're, it's, it's not what those creators built their reputations on you know working in that short format i'm sure if you had frank king and you know guys who did like sunday strips it would have been much different than guys who were doing monthly books and sometimes long runs on monthly books so i remember being disappointed in it it's it's probably something that's worth uh revisiting now you know i'm sure i, I look at stuff much differently now than i did then is that uh, is that a favorite of yours adam I haven't seen uh, Marvel's Marvel 1000, but it's the same kind of idea. I think you get these, you get people who work a certain way, and then you know that's what they're good at. You know, that's that's not what they train for, but that's what they have experience with. That's how they kind of think. And whenever you then switch up the format, you know, I don't know too many creators that we know from monthly books whose best work is like a one pager in an anthology. It just doesn't often work that way. I think television shows often do that, like with a final episode where they they switch tone or make it an hour long or something like that and it just doesn't, you know, it's, it's not, not why the thing was popular to begin with. I come across both of those books, the DC and the Marvel benefit books. I see them now and then in like dollar bins and stuff. I, th I think I have both of them. I'll have to dig them out sometime. That could be a fun thing to do, a uh, kind of a flip through and look at some of those different artists and what they came up with. This is not a commission. Um, this is for Four Color Fantasies where I'm signing this Saturday. They do some kind of a, like an art raffle. And so this is going to be my piece for that art raffle. Assuming that it turns out all right. <laughs> I can always spill ink on it. Quite a bit of time to go yet.
Adrian, I was just reading some, uh, What's Michael. Are you new to What's Michael? That's a really fun series, I think. I, I enjoy that one a lot. I just picked it up in, I think, Super Manga Blast. I picked up a couple issues of that recently, and I think it's featured in there, uh, at least in the ones that I have. Anybody that doesn't know What's Michael, it's a, um, I, I guess you call it a cat manga? <laughs> um, that I think Dark Horse published the uh, English edition. Man, going back to maybe the early 2000s is probably whenever they started with uh, Super Manga Blast and then did some collected editions of it. Oh, man. Comics that I save from bargain bins. Probably Faust. I'll buy any issue of Tim Vigil's Faust that I find. It's always a home for that. Um, I always buy New York City Outlaws whenever I come across that one and give them away or trade them or, or do something. Sometimes I throw, like I'll end up with doubles and sometimes when people order comics from me, I'll throw some of those doubles in. And the bargain bin also depends on the price. Like, do you guys know Andrew Robinson's Dusty Star. It was originally published by Caliber, and then Image published a couple of issues of it. It's, I think it's really great. It's this Western, and his art's amazing in it. It's really good, and I remember whenever everybody started dumping their back issues, I found a couple copies in, like, a quarter box, and that was one I, I bought because it was just like, somebody should have these. Like, I know someone will like these books. They shouldn't be in a quarter box. I don't, I haven't had any real uh, pain issues with my hand with inking. I have a pretty light touch when it comes to drawing. I know people who, you know, don't have a light touch with it or, and sort of grip their tool, the pencil, whatever, very tightly. I don't do that. So, um, you know, knock on wood, I, I haven't had any issues with pain related to inking. I'd probably be more likely to have pain from, you know, bad posture or something if I'm sitting in, in one position for too long. But the inking stuff, I'm fairly loose, especially, you know, this is a commission. So with the commission, it's a little bit of playing around. It's not something that I'm too concerned about having turn out a certain way. You know, part of this layout on this is very loose and that's by design. It's to allow me to kind of have fun and try different stuff. You know, I'm trying to do a lot of motion, so you'll see some of these lines are, they're, they're feathering instead of being a solid line, like on the backs of her leg, to try to suggest motion. So, I don't know. I haven't, I haven't used too many, um, like, foam grips on any of my brushes or pens. I do like, I have a couple of pen holders, like nib holders, that are larger than others. And I do like the bigger nib holders. I find them to be more comfortable. Hey, Adam, thanks again, man. Have a good evening. And be sure to check out that hand lettering episode. It'll be up later on tonight.
Christopher. Uh, Christopher Huston, Houston. I'm using a Raphael 8404, size 2. These are very similar to the Windsor Newton Series 7, the kind of the famous iconic ink brushes. I've tried both, and I have just had better luck with uh, the points on the brushes with the Windsor Newtons, but I think they're kind of the same, you know, same size, um, similar materials and construction and everything. Hey Scott, thanks for the super chat. Um, I have not checked out the Glow comic. I, I saw it one time, I didn't pick it up, I probably should have, because uh, I am curious about it, and it doesn't seem like it's sold in a way, I don't see it at every comic shop, so I don't know how easy it is to come by. Maybe whenever it um, comes to the collected edition, maybe I'll, I'll check it out then. Or if I come across it sometime, Sometimes whenever I'm in the comic shops, I just have a to-read to pile that's... I'm just not in a mood to buy any more comics. Uh, that's been happening a lot lately. It feels like I, uh, I've, I've picked up a lot of comics lately, whether it's stuff people have given me or things that I've bought or mail-ordered or whatever. So, yeah, there's, there's quite a bit on the, uh, the to-read pile. I have never been approached to do a picture book, at least I don't remember that. If it happened, it happened a long time ago and it was in a, you know, at a, at a relatively low level, but I don't remember being approached for that. I would be open to a picture book, you know, it, it would kind of depend on the circumstances, the timing, who's involved. Although, <laughs> that's kind of the same for any job, comics or not comics for me. Um, but I, I haven't I haven't done any picture book stuff. It's on my you know I like picture books. I, I tend to look at more picture books now than I probably did whenever I was even a kid. But I haven't uh, you know it's a different industry, and I just have not spent any time really pursuing that. But I would not be opposed to that. Horror manga recommendations. I'm going to be very boring and say anything by uh, Junji Ito. I don't know. Everybody else here, uh, how about some horror manga recommendations? I could go for some of those myself. You know what I have looked up horror manga wise is Parasite. I was looking for something um, Google image related and Parasite came up and then I just saw somebody else, oh, 
man, it must have been on Instagram or something. I think they were posting about a Parasite t-shirt. If you're interested in horror manga, like, that is worth a Google search. Because there are some amazing images in what I saw, and it's now on my list of things that I want to do a deeper dive into. Tell us about, what, what do you know, Frank? Tell us about Parasite. I don't know anything about it except I saw a couple images that look pretty amazing. Antonio, thanks for the super chat, man. Thanks for hanging out. Hadishi Hino. There are a bunch of English translations of his work. There was like, I think it was called Hino Horror Line. I can't remember who the publisher was. I'm not sure it was anybody uh, mainstream exactly, but they published like a bunch of his horror horror mangas and a lot of them are just single volume you know standalone short stories so very easy to get into and also very easy to pick up if you happen to come across them at like a show or in a discount bin or whatever you know it's not necessarily a, a, a specific order that you have to read them in That parasite description sounds amazing. Like, all the images that I saw, I don't know if they're the aliens or the alien monsters or what they are, but they look incredible and violent and dark and well-drawn. And like I said, I'm intrigued, man. That's It's, it's on my list to track down and, and check out. Frank, is that is that translated, or are you reading those online? Kazao Amuzo. Amuzo? Brandon, that name sounds familiar. What what would be some of those works? What would what would I know or people would know of, of that artist? Yeah, Uzimaki, okay, yes. Yeah, I, I know that artist. I know the, that work. Yeah, that's a good recommendation, too. Kataro's fun. I, I've seen Kataro compared a little bit to Hellboy because the main character is the story. It, it deals with a lot of Japanese folklore, like supernatural folklore and things, if I'm correct. And the main character is interacting with them in a way like, like a Hellboy. Is that... Hmm. Am I thinking of the right thing, Count Mecca? Does that sound... Is my description anywhere near accurate for that? I think D Drawn and Quarterly has published a lot of translated uh, Kataro stuff. And I think, I think his creator passed away within the last five years and I remember you know he, he was widely eulogized for that series and just his great cartooning and you know overall I think he he did some stuff did he do some war comics that are very well received man you guys are really uh making it hard for me to ink trying to think of all this stuff
Yeah, you mentioned Charles Foreman, Bob. I think he has a Halloween special out for Revenger. I haven't seen it yet. I think Floating World might be might have published it or is distributing it or something, but that's something to keep an eye out for. I, I love Halloween comics and uh, and I like Chuck Forsman's comics, so it's kind of a good a good match. That'll be one that I am looking for over the next couple of weeks. That's cool that they're re-releasing Drifting Classroom. That's not one that I've uh, read either, but it's one that I'm, you know, I've seen, I'm kind of familiar with, and always heard good things about, so maybe I'll get around to it now. Hey, Robert, I second that Speed Racer stuff. I think when the movie came out, somebody published a collection of the Speed Racer comics in, like, a, a really nice slipcase. I ended up getting it remainder somewhere, probably Half Price Books or something like that. And I think they're still around because I don't know how many they printed, but <laughs> that movie just didn't, I guess, didn't sell them very well. <laughs> In any case, I like those Speed Racer comics. They're a lot of fun. Like you said, they are fast and dynamic. And that's something I, for a while, I was looking for in comics because I, I couldn't, especially with cars, I just couldn't think of too many that were captured that dynamic quality. And, you know, Speed Racer did, but there aren't a lot of, racing comics and some of the good ones like that Toth Hot Wheels comics are a little hard to come by it used to be such a genre if you're ever digging through like weird Charlton Silver Age stuff or whatever you'll see a bunch of hot rod comics and stuff it's like that uh, Felipe Smith Ghost Rider I think might be the closest thing we have to that today which might be a good book for Halloween. A Comax Halloween special. <laughs> That's amazing. I've never seen that.
Yeah, I'm, I'm with you on the lack of more action comics, but I don't know, man. Super Superheroes are where everything's at at the moment. You know, like, think of movies, you know, is where you would see, like, a lot of action in the past. And, I mean, that stuff's just dominated right now, so. Don't know. All right, I got to clean up my brush. You guys sit tight. I will leave this here so you can see it. And I will be back in a couple of minutes to try to wrestle with pen guys I'm back what did I miss Gregory you know another good one if you like speed racers gunsmith cats there's a lot of car chasing racing stuff in that comic and it's pretty good with the whole speed action lines kind of stuff also Danny, get that petition going with, with me and Helen Joe on a skateboard girl zine. I am there. I am so there. I'm a huge fan of Helen Joe's stuff. I, I think she's really, uh, she, she's one of my favorite cartoonists, and sadly, she's a very good artist. And so other industries pay her, like animation, and then we don't get to see everything awesome that she's doing. So yes, let's, uh, let's get a p petition to change that. I'd be satisfied with just the Helen Helen Joe uh, skater zine. Hey, Master Panda, thanks for the super chat. All right, Brandon, I have Rottweiler, love it, found it for a dollar. And Gregory, I have Doberman, same deal. Um, might find it for a quarter, actually. Yeah, I, I like those comics. They're, uh, they are silly. Silly fun. Yeah, I've met Helen before at different stuff. I think we did a show in Austin together, and, uh, and she's always been really cool, but man, I like her drawings a lot. She's a real great, um, her characters have a great attitude. Anybody that doesn't, if you haven't read Gin and Jam, I would highly recommend it, although I don't know if she still sells it at her site or not. There for a while, you could get it from her for, I don't know, two bucks or three bucks or something. <clears throat> if that's not available, easily maybe start a petition to get that thing back in print 
It was originally published by Sparkplug. I think we've showed it off probably on the show before uh, in regards to like mini comics or, you know, any, any excuse we could think of. But it's out there and it's like middle school girls getting in fights at school and smoking and just being kind of like cool and menacing and very well drawn. Jade Man comic is good for fight scenes. Simon, the the, uh, the panels at the top of my my drawing table are um, twenty two panels that always work by Wally Wood. I don't really I don't really see them much. Like whenever I'm at my drawing table, I'm I'm kind of looking down instead of like up. But I like the idea of them, and they fit well. And my drawing table is big enough that I'm never reaching that far up so I thought they were a cool decoration and now they've been on there for a while Robert, you're going to hear about this next secret project in like a year. It's going to be a while. It's a it's a book. It's a um, you know like a graphic novel. So it's going to take me a while to get it to a point that it's on the schedule and you know starts to be promoted. So it's going to be a while before you hear about that. Unfortunately. Part of the reason that I'm doing these kinds of drawings on live streams is because I don't want to just go away, but I can't show the comics at the moment. Um, there'll be time in the future, though. There'll be opportunities for that. Don't worry. But it's going to take me a while to get get it to the point that it's on a schedule and starts to be publicly discussed. And then the great news is, once I start talking about it, and once it is out there, you'll probably get sick of hearing about it. I'll talk about it so much. How's that for a deal? Hey, Blazer Cartoons, who does my favorite speed lines? Man, I have no idea. Uh, I like Daniel uh, Warren Johnson's, uh, like his commissions a lot. So that's somebody that I, I've been looking at for probably a year or two and really like what he does. And he, what, one thing he does really well is, is speed and motion. So 
I don't know about speed lines in particular. Are speed lines all mostly the same? Does that make me a, a poser or something? <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, I don't know. Who's your favorite speed line artist? Uh, that's tough. I'd open that question up to anybody. Any, anybody have favorite speed lines? Yeah, Tomo draws everything great, I think. Maybe everybody does. Probably whoever is like a favorite um, action cartoonist would probably be, you know, somebody that would be one of my favorite speed line people. Yeah, I like Trad Moore, Toriyama, sure. Danny, what's a good Tezuka with speed lines? That's not somebody I, I think of right away with speed lines, but, you know, maybe I'm thinking of other characteristics of his work or possibly even other pieces of his work, you know, other, other books or something. Maybe we're thinking of different ones. Hey Christopher, thanks for the thanks for the super chat, man, and the compliments. I haven't read Phoenix, and I just picked up like the first big volume of it so that is that's that's a one i'm looking forward to danny but i haven't read yet and yeah lone wolf and cub for sure that that might be the winner maybe <laughs> if there is a winner to this this question it's hard to top lone wolf and cub i think I have some Blade of the Immortals sitting on my coffee table downstairs that I just took down last night to look at. Although, possible irony is that uh, I wanted to look at it for ideas on this composition, and I didn't get around to looking at it, so at some point I'll get, I'll, I will look at it and it'll just be for fun. <laughs>
I did a time lapse video one time. Actually, it might not have been time lapse. It might have been like a speed it up video. If there was some kind of time man manipulation, and I went around the uh, drawing kind of like this, adding speed lines, but I was freehanding them with a brush. And it was uh, one of the cooler looking videos that I've done in terms of artwork. Um, really had kind of a, you know, almost like a magic special effect or something of just turning the page around in a circle and creating all of these bursts.
Thanks, Brandon. Doom. A lot of these we do post on a channel. They're in a um, like in a playlist, so they're they're not they're available for anybody, but they're not like listed on our homepage. So if you look for a playlist of um, like live streams, you should be able to find this. And I'll probably put this one up because I don't know why not.
Hey Travis, welcome back to Comics Man. Thanks for the super chat. Man, Doom Santana asking about Jaime Hernandez's size of paper and measurements for panels. I don't know the answer to that offhand, uh, Doom, but there is a studio edition, and that reprints a bunch of his artwork at actual size. So if you can find a copy of that, um, you know whether it's even if a friend has it or whatever, to get a measurement, that would give you a measurement. As far as the magazine size, you know you can just you can just measure the like the magazine or the printed pages. And then basically size up, um, probably like you know one and a half times is my guess. I don't know for sure that that's how much he he draws, you know, enlarges it, but that's kind of the standard. So, you know, it's it's close to eleven by seventeen. I think I've seen the studio edition, and I think it's uh, close to that size. So that would be a place to start. And I mean, you can find, I think you can find listings of his art online like from comics art fans or heritage auctions site and that will give you dimensions of pages and stuff
Abdullah the Butcher Grand Design. Sign me up. I'd definitely read that one. I don't know if I'd want to spend that much time, though, around uh, <laughs> studying Abdullah the Butcher. I feel like that might be some dark subject matter. Day Australia. Is it bright and early in the morning in Australia, Nipper 80?
You can get me on a Herbie the Fat Fury Grand Design. I like Herbie the Fat Fury. Big Ogden Whitney fan. You guys see that new Ogden Whitney Romance Comics collection that just came out? It's uh it's it's good stuff, man. If you if you have any interest in romance comics or like weird 1950s kind of Americana, it's uh it's a hell of a collection. Ogden Whitney's a really interesting cartoonist. He's a guy that I went through a phase of really looking at and Herbie's probably his most well-known thing, but this new collection of romance comics really showcases the oddness of what he draws. Um, I would say if you're into somebody like, say, a Dan Klaus, it would probably be interesting to you. If you're in into, uh, there's some Wally Wood similarities, and if you have any interest, again, in like romance comics or comics of that time period, definitely worth a, a flip through if you see it at a, at a shop or at a show. Yeah, there's always possibility of getting Frank on at some point. I liked Pittsburgh a lot. I'm a big fan of his comics to begin with. And, man, it's hard for me to say which one is my favorite, but I thought Pittsburgh was an exceptional book. Very beautiful. Guys, I think I'm getting close to the end of this one. May add a little bit of screen tone. So thanks for joining me tonight. Thanks as always for watching Kayfabe. And look forward to the, uh, the lettering video, which we'll be dropping shortly. And I'll put up a, a high res of this. Um, once I get it all finished and scanned in and stuff like that. But, till then, thank you guys very much for watching. And have a good evening, everybody. Hey, thanks again, Adam. Thanks, everybody. 
Good night.